Welcome back to Upfront. We're exploring other parts of Governor Walker's budget now, and that involves changes to the state's voucher program and money for public schools. The governor on Tuesday said he would lift the cap on voucher schools, allowing any student now attending a public school to switch to a voucher school. His budget would leave public school funding flat in the first year, but raise it in the second year. We're looking at the effects of this now with two educators on the front lines. Dr. Demond Means, superintendent of the Mequon Thienesville District, and Henry Tyson, superintendent at St. Marcus Lutheran School, a private choice school in Milwaukee. Gentlemen, it's good to have you on the program. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Superintendent Means, let me begin with you. Uh, a lot of folks in, in the public uh, schools world are going, wow, this is really tough, tough news for us. How do you view this budget? I, I would concur. I, I think this is uh, creating a legacy for the governor. Uh, a legacy of less uh, commitment, um, uh, less money to public schools. There are 870,000 students who attend public schools across our state. And the, the legacy that this governor is leaving for public schools is that he's going to commit less to these students. He's going to force our school districts to continue to uh, uh, reduce programming, which is going to ultimately bring pain into the classroom. Henry Tyson, let me have you uh, address the conventional wisdom, which is this is a good budget for vouchers. This is a good budget for, for uh, private schools who participate in the Choice Program. You're one of those private schools that participates. Is this a good budget? Yeah, I'm not sure that it is. I mean, on the surface, really? the statewide expansion uh, is clearly a good thing if you believe, as I do, that all families, all parents, whatever their income level, should be able to choose the right school for their child. So there will be more options to do that throughout the state. The downside is uh, the funding is at $5,500 per child currently. And the reality is, is that that is nowhere near enough to educate a child. Uh, statewide average spending is $9,900. Uh, it's about 60% of that. So I'm not sure how private schools are actually going to go about taking advantage of the expansion uh, on that dollar amount. It just doesn't work. Let, let me have you address the, the criticism that you hear about uh, the governor's uh, decision to, to lift the cap and, and his commitment to, to voucher schools and to other education options. It is that we are creating a whole other set of schools, another, as some people have called it, entitlement system. Mm -hmm. We should be investing in our public schools. What do you say to folks who make that criticism? Well, I think the reality, so here in Milwaukee for years, we had tens of thousands of poor children uh, trapped in schools that were absolutely terrible. And so an alternative system was created. Uh, and, and that was Your the choice for program. Out there is in the central city of Milwaukee. Correct, right, right in the heart of downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the reality is, is that, that what is called an alternative system of vouchers has created some of the very best schools in the city. So Milwaukee College Prep, which is now Charter, was born as a voucher school. Bruce Guadalupe Community School, uh, Nativity Jesuit, uh, Notre Dame Middle School, uh, St. Marcus, Saloa, Atonement, the Hope Schools. These are uh, schools that are seeing incredible value-added growth uh, amongst their students and some of the best raw test scores in the city. So the reality is, is that the program here in Milwaukee has created some very good options for parents. It's also created some bad options for parents, and that needs to be dealt with. Uh, and I think statewide we're going to see the same thing, that parents will have more access to better options if they're not happy with the public schools. That, that's the argument for greater choice, as the governor would make that, that argument, uh, that, that it's about choice for parents. What, what, are, are, do you accept that argument, that, or how do you feel about that argument? I'm baffled by the governor's proposal. Um, I, I hear him saying that he wants to provide more parental choice, but in this budget proposal that he put forth, he's recommending the elimination of the state's uh, first parental choice program, the Chapter 220 program. It's a voluntary integration program That's in correct. the metro Milwaukee area. That's Why correct. does that bother you? Why are you? Uh... That bothers me because we live in a hyper-segregated community. Uh, it bothers me because I've seen the, the benefits of Chapter 220 uh, for, for young people, not only living in the residential communities, but also the children who live in the city of Milwaukee. But moreover, I agree with Henry's statement that parental choice is important. and, and uh, as a public school official, I don't uh, begrudge uh, parental choice. And so we should make Chapter 220 
a choice for families. And to suggest that we're going to eliminate that program is concerning to me. Um, I also want to just uh, speak to the fact that the accountability measures that are being re referenced in this uh, state budget is something that public school officials embrace. We, we want to be held accountable. Do you like the letter grades that he's talking about? I would prefer that the governor consider this, uh, the Senate bill that's being uh, uh, floated out in the legislature right now and that that bill doesn't include letter grades. I, I don't know if you have to have letter grades to to ascertain if a school's doing their job or not. Mm -hmm. Let me have you address that. How do you feel about the governor's proposal to have letter grades for schools? Well, first of all, I'm with Demond on, on, um, uh, on, on his other point. Uh, sorry, I lost Chapter uh, 220. Chapter 220, yeah. absolutely. That a lot of our graduates use that, and I think that that's an important program. Um, I'm all for letter grades. I think, uh, as the governor has said, it's critical that parents know exactly how they're their schools are performing. Uh, people understand letter grades, they're clear. And frankly, if my school was to receive a low letter grade, uh, I would leverage that. And I would get the faculty together and I'd get the parents together and I'd say, you know what, a C grade or a D grade, that's not acceptable. Let's fix it. Uh, and so I think it tells parents exactly what they need to know. Uh, and I, I hope they choose to follow through and do it. Give me your sense, uh, and we just got a, a little bit of time here. If you had a chance to talk to, to lawmakers, and I assume you probably will be talking to some lawmakers between now and the time the budget is passed, what are you going to be telling them? What's the, the message you're going to be delivering? We need to invest in our public schools. That the vast majority of school-aged children in the state of Wisconsin choose public schools. And so we have to continue to fund those schools. If the legislature, if uh, the governor wants to create a second system of schools with uh, voucher schools, uh, I'm not here to debate that issue. But that should not come at the expense of public schools. Uh, and, and so the children that are attending the public schools all across the, the, the state, they deserve to have a, a, a very good education. And, and that starts with proper funding. What would be the message you'd be telling? State Same Washington? message, but except that we've got, to, we've got to invest, which I think I hear, in all of our schools. Uh, and so as it is right now, I, I operate a voucher school in the city of Milwaukee with the, the lowest income students in the city, and we get the least amount of money at $7,210. Uh, that's almost impossible to deliver high quality education to a very low income population. And statewide, it's going to be the same thing. It's low income vouchers, and they're funded at the $5,500 level that funding will not work. And so we need to invest more in all of these school options. Superintendent. And, yep. and so if I may, yep. I, I think ultimately the legislators and the governor need to have a, a good conversation about a, a new funding system. Instead of avoiding the conversation and continuing to fix what we all agree is a broken funding system for schools, it's time for all the legislators to sit down with educators and, and to create a new system. Now, Superintendent DeMond Means from the Mequon Thienesville School District and Superintendent Henry Tyson from St. Marcus Lutheran. Thanks to both of you for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up next, getting answers and making changes at the Toma VA after an opiate abuse scandal. We'll hear from the parents of a Marine who died there. That's coming up next on Upfront.